Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're working on the Barracuda today again. So what we're gonna do today is a couple of things. I actually took this on a drive yesterday with a couple of buddies of mine and um, I noticed that the handling's okay for you know something that old, but uh, the rear end's sort of wonky. I mean, that those leaf springs are not meant to handle turns and to be quite honest, I really want it to handle just a little bit better. I mean, obviously there's only so much I can get out of that without, you know, dumping tons of money into it, but maybe maybe there's a few tricks that I can do, right? So um, I'll show you what I'm gonna, I got here, you know? Okay, so real quick here, I'm gonna be installing these things right here. Now, if you've never heard of these or if you've never seen these things before, they're actually uh, for trucks primarily, for load bearing and things of that nature. When you overload the back end of the truck, you're supposed to apply some of these to kind of help ease the tension, the load, you know, it's kind of like a, like a semi extra leaf spring. And so, you know, these things are pretty big, they're pretty heavy. They come in a kit for both sides. So that's pretty much the spring helper right there and the U-bolts that come with it. There's another one that was in here, it's, it's a pair. And that's actually, one of them's already on the car. I started earlier. I just wanted to make sure everything fit right correctly. And I'll show you guys in a minute what that looks like. But um, I had another style of that on the car already to kind of help with the stance of it and the better handling characteristics. But you know, that one that was on there before just didn't quite cut it for me, to be honest. And this looks a little bit more substantial. It's got a little bit more metal to it. And the spring tension seems to be a little bit better. But a quick explanation of how these are supposed to work, guys, is these actually sit on top of the leaf spring, as you'll see in a minute, and they are supposed to provide like a greater spring rate. So these two U-bolts, right, go on each end. So they grab onto here and one over here, and they bolt onto your existing leaf spring. And what they do is they start straightening out this bow as you tighten them down, which increases the spring that wants to come back up again, right? These wanna go back to their original shape. So they start adding more and more spring rate to the spring that you have over there, more tension. So that'll help for, you know, height, obviously, and also for the, the more that this tries to compress back out again, the more rate you're gonna get out of it, the more resistance you're gonna get out of it. So, you know, we're gonna get those on there and I'll show you in a minute what they look like. All right, so let's get underneath here. Okay, so these are my leaf springs. Now, as you can see, they're a bit old, you know, uh, and obviously they're a bit tired. They don't quite handle the way they're supposed to. I mean, to be quite honest, they weren't really meant for handling per se. Uh, they were really just for load and for like, you know, trucks come with this technology still, and it's really just for load bearing. But, um, you know, they can handle pretty okay, you know, for a street kind of application. And, you know, back when they were new, maybe they were pretty good for the time, but honestly, it's been 50 years or so, and it, this thing's kind of beat up. So, these tag a bit. Uh, I do have air shocks, if you can see them there. Right in there. No? Not maybe? There you go. Those are air shocks that I have there for a little bit better, uh, you know, displacement of the weight when the thing gets overloaded. But honestly, those really don't do good for handling purposes. So, I'm going to be replacing those with uh, the regular performance shocks that are supposed to be available for this vehicle. I do have a pair of them that were on this car, but unfortunately they, they just don't do anything for load bearing, so I put the air shocks. Well, the air shocks are okay for load bearing, but there goes my handling, that, whatever was already left of it. So I'm gonna try to use this as kind of a hack. I mean, you know, gotta try whatever I, I can try. And there is performance springs that they sell for these, you know, that I can get from certain performance shops and such. But this being a Mopar, these things are expensive. Um, and I also have to replace bushings, you know, these things, the hangers, all kinds of different stuff that I would have to do. And I'm on a budget. So I need to really, really, really be tight on what I can do while also not being cheap, you know? So these I heard are pretty good. I'm gonna give them a shot. You can actually adjust the tension depending on how far this nut goes. And you could just kind of adjust them to, you know, the kind of spring rate and so on and so forth. So we're gonna give these a shot and see how good they do. All right, so I already did this side. I'm gonna do that other side over there. As you, oh, by the way, you see that different spring underneath? This came off of this vehicle. Now this is something I tried before. Now this is okay and it does a pretty okay job, but it only functions once it's reached a certain load and they're not quite as beefy as these ones up here. So that right there is okay for just load honestly, but these might actually help with my spring rate problem, which is, you know, after I took it for a drive, I can tell that these would still rub up in here and 
you know, it's it's one of those things where like we're gonna we're gonna try to fix that. All right. So all right, let's get it started. Also, real quick, guys, I don't I know I don't need to tell any of you this, but uh, when you're doing jacking up a car, obviously use the correct mounting points to jack up a car and use a jack stand. Never get under the car without one of these. All right, that's it. Let's get on to this. All right, so there it is. Oh, let's see, that took it off. Now I'm gonna put the other spring, like that one, on here. All right, so let's get started. All right, so there it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we got this spring back on there. Now the way these work, like I said earlier, is they loop with this U-bolt right here into the actual leaf spring itself. And as you tighten this section, see that tight, that section's completely all the way down, sitting on the actual leaf spring, uh, all the way down. So it torqued pretty good. And this is where your adjustment happens. So the further down you tighten these, all the way up this U-bolt, the more tension you're gonna get out of this. And obviously the more tension, because these are you know, part of the spring now, the more height you're gonna get out of the car. So you gotta watch, you know, how your car sits and in correlation with how much spring tension you're gonna get out of it. All right, so let's see how this sits and um, we'll go from there. And I'll adjust it as I need it and uh, we'll see if this even pays off. So let's move on to the next thing, huh? All right, guys, so I'm gonna put these on. These are my old uh, KYB gas adjust shocks. They're really, really good actually for what they are. Um, I know the order of the day nowadays is Bilstein shocks, but these are performance shocks for this vehicle. Um, these were before Bilsteins and all that stuff were available for this type of car, and they work really, really well. Um, they're not amazing. They're not for like track tested performance, but they do the job well. They control the rear end a lot better than those air shocks will. And to be quite honest, they'll be an upgrade. These look a little raggedy, but honestly, um, they still function really well they're very stiff so yeah i'll get them on there and uh, we'll see how it works okay <laughs> slight setback um so i'm gonna have to take this partially apart in order to get these shocks in there so that's gonna take forever and quite frankly it might be a little boring so i'm just gonna go ahead and cut to when they're already installed and uh we'll go from there okay all right see you then here we go let's see how this ends up and there it is oh, you see those white shocks back there right those are the kybs i talked to you about the springs the spring helpers are in on both sides yeah i know that these u-bolts kind of look a little ugly but right now we're just in the tuning phase they're trying to make it work so uh yeah i mean i put it on there i already bounced it up and down to see uh, how it would feel and it feels pretty good so all i gotta do now is take it out for a test drive and see how she works all right one other thing guys before i move on um, make sure that everything that you tighten down is tightened down where the vehicle is level already sitting where the suspension is supposed to be sitting never tighten down anything um, lift it up or at a weird angle because then it's going to mess with all the bushings and everything you're going to mess up your suspension a lot quicker that way so just make sure everything's sitting the way it's supposed to be sitting and then tighten everything down um, to spec okay just quick tip all right testing out the uh the new suspension setup in the back so man i gotta tell you what a difference huge massive difference you know because we put such a high-tech suspension back there <laughs> right but um no seriously speaking this thing i mean it it really handles really well it's not even swaving that much or swerving sorry it uh, actually takes the corner pretty good I'm just going around town right now and I've been hitting little potholes and things. It handles it like a breeze. It's doesn't even know I got way back there. It's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, quick hack. Using those uh, leaf spring uh, helpers that got them out of O'Reilly's. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty good stuff. They actually work really, really well. This thing is solid. My lord, I should have done that to begin with. Messing around with uh, air shocks. See here, I'm gonna take a turn. Very little this way. Yeah, feels really nice. It actually 
feels like it hooks a little bit better too. So overall, I'm happy with the results. And uh, yeah, I mean, the whole thing took me about an hour to do and that's just because I was taking my time. But other than that, I recommend it. Oh, so far, right, we're gonna do a long turn. I'm actually gonna take it on a real drive, you know, kind of cutting some canyons, if you will, a little bit with it. But uh, we'll see how it does. Other than that, I like it. All right, cool. All right, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, we're working on this again. Remember this thing? <laughs> so uh, today I decided, after I did all the suspension stuff with this thing, um, I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna make it look nice. You know, well, I'm gonna try to make it look nice. Uh, obviously, it's dirty from grime of years of all that stuff. So what I decided to do is obviously wash it, get all the stuff off of it, and then sand it down a little bit. This is supposed to be chromed, but that ain't gonna happen. Um, and I'm going to try to maybe paint it. Uh, I saw this really cool paint, the stainless steel paint. Um, I think it'll match the interior of the car a little bit better. I'm just gonna cover it all in stainless steel, and uh, hopefully it looks good. We'll see. But uh, all right, you're gonna join me on the journey. And it's pretty simple, just uh, sandpaper, and uh, you know, get it all nice and smooth, and hopefully the it adheres. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. All right, guys, all done with the washing of this plate, and uh, honestly, all being said and done, this thing looks really nice. I mean, look at that. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but all of the dirt's gone, which is nice, but also it cleaned up so good, you can actually see the old color through the backside of that. There's like a like an aluminum color to it in the back and that looks really really good i mean i could honestly just clean this up and paint the rim of it and it pretty much take care of the whole thing which i might do but i don't know i think i'm still gonna i still need to do sandpaper work and get it all smooth and so that i could put on the stainless on the outside of the rim at least and make that look nice so huh, let's keep going all right guys so this is what we're gonna do um so you see all this imperfection right here? That's what I'm gonna sand down and try to get rid of because if I just spray over this, it's gonna look nasty. Uh, obviously, we got overspray on there. Somebody tried to paint it while this is still on there. And all of that, if I just paint over, it's gonna show. So I'm gonna try to get it as smooth as possible. And to do that, I'm gonna use, first, I'm gonna go with this sandpaper right here, some, eight grand, some 800, sorry. And it really should take care of all of this, but just in case I can't get rid of all of it, I can still feel it with my hands. I'll use some of this 100 sandpaper, and that should pretty much get me to where I can get this nice and flush or smooth. And then with the 800, I can just round it all out and be ready for paint. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I got it pretty much where I want it to be. I can't feel any scratches. At the same time, it is a little scuffed up. That way, the primer that I'm gonna put on this will adhere right, and then the top coating, the, the actual stainless steel paint will go on that. So there's gonna be a couple of layers, obviously your uh, primer coating, and then the stainless steel paint. And you know what, after sanding it down, I've decided I'm gonna paint the entire thing stainless steel it just it'll look more uniform and uh, it'll save me time on having to tape this whole thing off and have to do this and that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wash off all the dust that's on here let it dry and then we're, we're ready for spray paint so all right let's get to it all right guys so here we go this is ready for paint and there you go as you can see we're gonna do this the right way I cleaned it up with a little bit of alcohol to get it nice and dry uh, and get rid of all the contaminants, oils, and things. Little work surface here that I got ready. Obviously, get your mask, primer, and paint. All right, so real quick, always put your primer, a couple of coats, make sure everything's covered the way you want it to be, and then your paint. It's actually very simple, really easy. Uh, we'll go through the process together and we'll get it done. Okay, so there's our first coat of primer. Um, it looks like it's got pretty good coverage. Obviously, I'm gonna go one more time over this thing, make sure I got every crevice, but it's looking pretty good. All right, I like it, make it happen. All right, second coat done, and we're just gonna let this dry for a couple of minutes just to get it nice and tacky. You know, you wanna be able to have this so that it's ready to get painted by the stainless steel. 
again it's all about prep so all right let's let this dry for a little bit and we'll get back to painting cool all right so the first pass was stainless steel uh it looks pretty good it's actually getting the color that i wanted and this is just a preview of what it's going to look like obviously i'm not done yet but yeah not so bad let this dry just for a second and we'll continue cool all right so guys look at that all right she's basically done uh it's just drying now i'm gonna leave it alone for a little bit let it completely dry looks really nice looks like super metal very very cool if i need to i'll touch it up but i think we're good to go all right i'm pleased with it very nice all right guys uh so i'm done and i think it looks i mean you guys aren't ready for this this, this is i like it i think it's pretty cool Let, let's just let's just check it out right let's just check it out all right and boom big reveal look at that i am very pleased with the way that looks look at that very nice right where i was going for a kind of aluminum stainless steel looking thing can't actually tell but the outside rim is actually more of an aluminum color and the inside rim is actually uh, stainless steel but man oh man look at that i think that looks awesome what do you guys think let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this but i think it looked amazing all right guys so i think that's gonna do it for today Ooh, i got flying stuff all over look at this that's just a shame anyway <laughs> so this is awesome i think we had a productive day we did the rear suspension and we did the painting of the bezels and i mean pretty much all i have to do now is put on the sensors and wire it of course but all in due time right all right guys thank you all for watching and of course don't forget to like share and subscribe all the stuff that you're supposed to do when you're a youtuber i guess and uh yeah all right see you guys